I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on linear relations. We'll begin with finding from the given data a linear relation and set of relevant points. In this particular video, I'm going to take up three examples. Rather, two will be the examples and one will be your test question. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given and also check my website for the latest videos. Here is a question for you. Solve for the unknowns from the given coordinate points for each of the following. So we have three different examples here. Table shows coordinates of the points representing a linear relation, right? So all of them represent a linear relation. What you need to find is A, estimate the values of A, B, C, and D. So first, estimate the value of A, B, C, and D. Part B is, determine the linear relation representing the data. That means find the equation, right? So you have to determine the linear relation representing the data. And C is calculate the value of E and F. So you'll notice in these tables, the values A, B, C, and D, you need to estimate. And the values E and F, you need to calculate after finding the linear relation. Is that clear to you? So that becomes a question for you. You can always pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Few important things which we'll like to write here is when we say from data, we want to say a linear relation, what does that mean? So you remember that really means that the first difference is constant. Right? So first difference is what? First difference is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So that is the first difference, which is constant. Or you can also say that this, that is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 is constant. Well, in case x2 minus x1 is 1, in that case, the first difference is y2 minus y1, and that is a special case. In the three examples which I have taken, you'll find that x2 minus x1 is not equal to 1, right? So here, note that delta x is not equal to 1, correct? Okay? So that makes these three questions a bit difficult. Perfect. Now keep that in mind. Pause the video and answer the question. Let's look into these solutions one by one. Example one, we need to estimate the values of A, B, C, and D. The table gives us the different values, and we also know that this is a linear relation, correct? Perfect. And as I explained earlier, first difference is constant, when we have a linear relation. Another important thing is linear relation also means that if you graph it, in that case, graph is a straight line, correct? So I've shown this straight line right there. So joining the two given points, the points we plotted on the coordinate plane, this is minus 4, 3, and the other point here is 2, 6. So when you plot these points, what you get is a straight line. So based on this given information, we'll find the unknowns A, B, C, D, E, and F. Is that clear to you? Perfect. So that is how we're going to approach. So first step first, which is to find the values of a, B, C, and D will adopt this property that the difference is constant, correct? So let's find what is the difference between 
the consecutive y values given to us and the x values given to us. As you can see from the y values, it goes from 3 to 6. That means the difference here is 3, right? How do we get this? 6 minus 3, right? So that is the change in y, correct? That is your delta y. So that means to get the next value, what do we need to do? 6 minus 3 is 3. So we need to add 3 each time. Perfect. So that is how you could get the value of B and D. Now, if you look at the X values here, what is delta X? Well, to find the delta X, let's do X2 minus X1. So it is 2 minus minus 4, and that gives you the value 6. So we need to add 6 each time to get the value of A and C. Is that clear to you? And that is what we have done here. Since the relation is a linear, gradient is constant between any two coordinate points. You could use any two coordinate points, right? So gradient is constant between any two coordinate points. So gradient is, as you know, slope. Was we'll just change in y over change in x. We did find that as shown here, it is three over six. So change in y, is 3, change in x is 6. That means for every change of 6 in the independent variable x, y, will, y value will increase by 3. That is what it means, correct? So based on this, we've estimated the value of a, b, and c, correct? As shown here in the table, right? So just clearly, that is so simple. Now, the second part of the equation is to find the value of E and F for the given values in the table. Now, you cannot just continue by increasing or decreasing the values. It is better to find the equation. So now, let us see how do we find the equation and then the unknown values. So let's continue with where we were. We will first find the gradient. We like to find the equation in the form of y equals to mx plus b. So let's find what is m equals to. m, which is the slope or the gradient, is equal to change in y over change in x. So we'll do 6 minus 3. So we get 6 minus 3 in the numerator divided by 2 minus minus 4, which becomes 2 plus 4. So we get 3 over 6. Now you can simplify 3 over 6 and write it as half as shown here. Therefore, we can now write an equation in the form of y equals to mx plus b, where we just calculated that the value of m is equal to half, substituting m as half, and now considering one of the points. You are given two set of points. Now you'll find that this is a better point to use, since that avoids fractions, correct? We have a slope which is half, so the equation is y equals to half x plus b. Now to find the value of b, you need to choose a point. So the point 2, 6 is better. When I substitute 2 for x, half and 2 multiplies to give you 1, right? So you get here 6 equals to 1 plus b. And now we can find what b is by taking 1 on the other side. So b is 6 minus 1, which is 5. And therefore, we get our equation. So this is one of our answers. We need to find the equation first. And that completes part B for us. Is that clear to us? Now, C and D are to find the given values. For the given value, the other coordinate value. Right. So when 50 is the x value, we need to find the value for the y. And when the y value is minus 5, we need to find the corresponding x value. For that, we'll use the given formula, which we just derived for the equation of the line to find the unknown. Substituting, in this particular case, x equals to 50, in the given equation, we get e, right? e is equals to half of 50 plus 5. Half of 50 is 25 plus 5 is 30. This is right considering the point, which is actually given to us as 50e, right? 
So y value is e, and that's why I wrote e here. You get the point? And the x value of 50. Now, let's look into the second coordinate point, which basically is f, the x value, and minus 5, the y value. Substituting minus 5 for the y and f for the x, we get the equation minus 5 equals to half of f plus 5. Now, from here, we can rearrange and find the value of f. Correct. So that's what we have done. Taking 5 on the left side, minus 5 minus 5 is actually minus 10, and that is equals to half of f. Cross multiply to get the value of f as minus 20. Is that clear to you? So we got all the variables, all the unknowns as shown here. That is how you need to solve these questions. Now let's take a, another example. I like, like you to now pause the video, answer this. You exactly know how to do it, correct? Now this example involves fractions, a lot of fractions, right? So uh, you should be good at fractions at this stage. The data given to us is the X and Y values shown in the table here. Now we'll begin with part A to find the value of A, B, C, and D. We have to estimate from the given values. Well, the strategy here is we know that delta Y and delta X, that helps us to give us the value. So we calculated here delta Y is equal to minus 7 minus of minus 1, right? That means minus 7 plus 1, and that means minus 6. So we need to add minus 6 to the y values to get the value of B and D. So when you do that, you get value of B and D. Similarly, for X, we need to find what is the change in X? Change in X is 11 minus 7, which is 4. So in this case, we are going to add 4 to get the value of A and C. So that is what is done here. So once again, the strategy is to use the difference. Since the relation is linear, gradient is constant between any two coordinates, right? So the point, coordinate points. So the gradient here, m is delta y over delta x, we found it to be minus 6 over plus 4. That really means to find the value of a and c, we'll add 4 to the given x value just before it, right? So a will be 11 plus 4, and b will be the result 15 plus 4, right? So we will, uh, okay, b is the other side. So c will be 15 plus 4. So that is how we got the x values. Now for b, we have to take away 6. So we have minus 7 minus 6, giving us minus 13, and then minus 13 minus 6, giving us minus 19. So we get all the four values which we need to estimate. Now to find the value of E and F, as we did last time, we are going to find the equation representing this data. So let's do it. So now to find the equation, first step is to find the slope or the gradient, right? So find the gradient, that is the first step. Right. So in this case, the gradient is delta y over delta x, which we calculated as minus 6 over 4, which can be simplified as minus 3 over 2. So we found that the gradient m is minus 3 over 2. Now, that gives us the equation in the form of y equals to mx plus b, replacing m equals to minus 3 over 2. We get our equation y equals to minus 3 over 2x plus b. To find the value of b, we have to select one of the given points. Well, you can select any one of these. The first one seems to be simpler. So I have to use the point 7 minus 1 to find the value of b. Substituting minus 1 for y, 7 for x, we can now find the value of b. Taking 21 over 2 to the left side. We get 21 over 2 minus 1, which gives you 19 over 2. So the value of B is 19 over 2. Substituting, we get our equation, which is right there. So this is part B for us. Correct? We know the equation that represents the given data. Now let's find the value of E and F. Well, the value of E, as you know, the coordinate point here is 33E. 33 is the X value. Substituting 33 here, we can find what E is. 
it comes out to be 40. In the second case, we'll substitute the point, which is f and 50, y value being 50, x being f. Substituting in the given equation, we can now find the value of f by rearranging. So we have all the answers. Is that clear to you? That is how we are going to do it. Now, what I've done here is question number three, which is the table values given to you. You need to estimate A, B, C, and D, and then find the equation of linear relation represented by this data. Then, after you find the equation, calculate the value of E and F as we did in earlier two examples. Take it as a test question, right? So this becomes a test question for you. Perfect. So try this out. Perfect. Here are the answers for you. So you can match with your solution. I hope that helps. With this, we come to an end of this particular video. We learned how, when we are given the data of a linear relation, how do we find equation of a line and the missing values? I hope it helps. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time, and once again, all the best.